Hello, welcome to Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. I hope that theme song is stuck in your mind for at least a week, so you remember to watch the next episode next Monday. With me is someone I know as Mischief. Uh, would you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I am Mizzy Stevenson. Um, most people call me Mischief or um, M. M is fine also. I am a transplant to Salt Lake over the last, oh my goodness, it's almost been 20 years. Oof. Oof. The <laughs> valley won't let me leave. Oh, goodness. Um, I am a producer, um, burlesque performer, belly dancer, and just general miscreant, depending on who you ask. Perfect. I've known Ms. for a while. I don't, I don't remember when I actually met you. I knew Don first, um, who introduced me to you. We've, start, we've been working together since, I think, that, that show in 2018? It's That'd be that. Jen Ogle's birthday? Yep. Right. And I have Jen Ogle's on my list of weirdos, so we'll, we'll get to her eventually. Mm -hmm. um, I love Jen. So um, in what ways would you say you are a weirdo? How am I a weirdo? Um, let's start with my name. Um, there's a long story behind that, but what's one of the reasons why I go behind M. Um, I do have a legal name, so I'm able to get actual work. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Um, another weird reason that I'm a weirdo is because I am extremely passionate about the things that I love. If I don't believe in guilty pleasures, if you love something, no matter how awkward it makes you seem, you should go in with for, for full gusto. And that's what makes me weirdo. All right. You think uh, that that has you stand out against the, the general population? You think, uh, yeah? Usually it's here. Or uh, sort of as a population, as a community and a society, we don't honor the passionate, uh, or, or at least the, the really interested. If you're, if you're not kind of bored with your life, then you're not doing it right. Oh, you must be subdued. Um, what is everyone going to think about you? Um, I have a large group of friends who are neurodivergent or on the autism spectrum. And they are some of the most passionate people about that, that one thing, their thing, and they will share it with you. And it is the, actually, it's an expression of love. Mm -hmm. So if I can make someone or have someone find something that they love and spark their joy, about that thing or several things or even themselves, then I don't mind being a weirdo. Good. Um, what have you been up to lately that you would like to maybe tell the people about that might be interesting? Insanity, pure, adulterated, yeah. masochistic insanity. Um, I have recently become the owner and producer of Manhara's Theatrical Arts. We just received our um, nonprofit status for the state of Utah in February. Yay. We're one of our board members and soon to be teachers. Um, the goal of Harris is to get anyone who wants to be within the world of the arts, be it dance, backstage, acting, um, producing, a chance to experience working in those fields. The problem is a lot of the arts has, well, basically since the Renaissance with the advent of patrons and things like that, arts have been restricted to those with either access to money or someone with access to money. And that's not, ex that's not fair. There are so many passionate, insanely talented people here in Utah who will never be seen, who will never have a chance to go to an audition because they, they've never learned. They don't have the money to go to the U. They don't have the money to invest hundred dollars a year, hundreds of dollars, sometimes thousands of dollars a year in acting and lessons. And on the other side of that, there are so many giving wonderful teachers here who want to bring people into the fold, 
who want to share their skills, but yay, capitalist society, they have to charge exorbitant amounts just so they can survive, just so they can have maintain their equipment. So we're caught in this loop where everybody wants to give, but they don't have the outlet in which to do it and maintain a life to where they're comfortable. And uh, often, if you are not one of the lucky few who can dedicate your life to your art, you've got a day job or a straight job that's going to leech the life out of you. So you have none left over for doing dance on the weekends or um, dressing up like a, a, a pirate and uh, being kind of foolish with your friends. Or I will say Man Harris is, is, is pretty cool. And uh, I, I'll, I'll put the, the spelling on the screen here. Uh, look it up if you've been following us this far or if this is your first episode. Um, look up Manharis and uh, maybe come to one of the events. Yes, you can come as you are. Um, outside, uh, one of the way that we are training our actors is through the um, advent of immersive storytelling. So you have places like um, the Star Wars experience in Disney, where you go in as yourself and you get involved with the story. Here, we have basically the granddaddy that is Evermore and who started that that whole theme park be more immersive as opposed to going in and visiting various experience exhibits and visiting various um, various um, attractions. That's that's fine, and people love roller coasters, and that's great. But what's lacking in a lot of theater is that personal experience. We've all watched a movie, or in my case, if I'm reading, I am in that moment, and I am struck by whatever happens to that character and you come up with all of these wonderful scenarios of what you would do. So places like Star Wars, the Star Wars, um, Evermore, Heroes Beyond, which is another Utah um, immersive theater experience, allows you to be that hero. And that's what we want people to be. They, we want people to feel like when they step into our sphere, they're not just viewing the show, they're a part of the show, they are the heroes. And with each interaction with the characters in these places, you, you can build the relationships that a lot of people find lacking or have a hard time developing in the everyday world. And I think it's timely. I, I think uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, interactive performance and, and other arts kind of popping up everywhere. Uh, people are looking for more experience um, I, I also have connections with uh, Dreamscapes, which is an interactive art um, space. Um, haunted houses are immersive performance. Uh, escape rooms are immersive settings. Um, it, it seems like this is something people are, are looking for. And, uh, and uh, Manharis Man is, is a, a fantasy setting, um, but I, believe you, you, you kind of butt up against sci-fi and steampunk and a little of everything, right? Exactly. Um, we are predominantly, one of the best things about Manharis is that our world doesn't exist anyplace else. So we have this huge sandbox to bring in high fantasy and even Afrofuturism in the case of one of the cultures there. Um, we bring in the fact that it's, a utopian idea without being a utopia. Um, for example, the LGBTQ community, it's not a big deal. We have characters who, who are gay, who are pan, who are asexual, and each one of those characters gets to explore their idea of love with that person that they love with, that they're in love with. And, and also featuring performers who, uh, who are those things, though not necessarily the same as their character. Exactly. We allow people to explore all sides of that, their personality. That is what acting is supposed to do. Um, it is one of the best ways to learn empathy also by putting yourself in those other people's shoes. It's one thing to imagine it, but it's one thing when you have someone staring you in the face asking you why it's okay to love this person, especially if you're not, if you're not LGBTQ or if you're cis, one of our actors currently, um, 
He plays a character named Lionel. Lionel is a ranger and he's everything that what people would expect of a hyper-masculine Aragon type of character. He is madly in love with his husband, madly. It is one of the sweetest love stories that we get to write. And I, I have to say the performance is strong. Um, just the, 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 one, the one scene uh, I, I shared that, that conversation, every time he mentioned his husband, it, it's like his eyes welled up a little bit. He, he really lives that character. He does. And one of the things that we want to do is create, you, you know, as a fellow geek, that sometimes fandoms are cruel, heartless places. Oh, yeah. They're, they're awful. Like, you can love the genre so much, but you can loathe the fandom. We want to have that safe space for all sorts of actors, actors of color, which there are very few in Utah. Um, actors who, we have, we have a couple of trans actors who I would personally die for. So we want to have that safe space. We want to have people be who they truly are while in the same time exploring themselves as, as characters or creating as our, um, we have volunteer makeup artists who have come in because they want to um, teach people or they want to hone their skills and we provide a palette for that. We have um, people who donate their time to making, you were able to see the bar. Um, that was made by another one of our board members. And they're all coming together, not for hope of payment, not for hope for recognition, but to make something good and to have a place of escape for, for everyone. I think, um, and th this is not just in Utah, but it's very much in Utah. Um, a lot of what people see on stage or in performances is very samey as far as body type and color and, and all that. And representation is tough. And one of the things you hear if, if you're talking to people about representation is, well, why don't you make your own damn thing if, if you want representation? And so that's what you're doing. You're making your own damn thing. And, and everyone is welcome. One of the things that our story team decided early on is Everyone gets to be perceived as beautiful. Everyone gets to have that love interest. Everyone gets to be the hero. All of our characters get story arcs that are specific for that character and ride along a very precise track. Now our guests can come in and they can throw everything out the rails. I have, we have flow charts for everything and we have a secret little space for uh oh, it's the uh oh track. I am personally familiar with the uh oh track because I've caused a lot of them in various different um, immersive experiences. Mischief. <laughs> exactly. But we, we want to have people enjoy the idea that they don't have to think about what they look like when they're on stage. That's just a vessel for the character. You don't have to be a certain type to have a love art. You don't have to be a certain type to stand there and stare down the big bad evil guy with a sword in hand. That doesn't exist there. The only thing that matters is, can you bring that to the character? I think if, um, if anyone's been following this from the beginning, you, you're sensing a, a theme here. Um, and a lot of it is about empowering people to, um, create as themselves and a lot of it's about being well i mean being a weirdo being outside the norm in some way whether that means being queer or neurodivergent or here in utah not white uh, you know um have you without without raising old beefs or naming specific names have would, would you be willing to talk a bit about some of the troubles you've had uh, with the performing arts community that side <laughs> and it's the main problem that I see in Utah with the performing arts community is that Utah has this wonderful culture of volunteerism and it's great 
but artists sell themselves short and they undercut each other. And there's this idea that if you do something and I, I do the same thing that we're automatically in competition. That is not the case. Um, a rising tide raises all ships. So if you're good at what you do, I am going to see that. I am going to praise that. As a producer, my personal feelings towards someone does not matter. If you're good, I'm going to hire you as long as you're not causing trouble backstage. I, that's a completely different thing. But yeah, there's this undercutting and worry where your next meal is going to come from. It gets pretty vicious here. It's I have lived on the East Coast and I've lived in the South and Utah is probably one of the more vicious markets that I have seen because it's so small and you have this big fish in this incredibly small pond mentality and not realizing that, yes, you love your art, you're passionate, but once you leave the Valley, no one cares. So you're gonna have to start that over. So you might as well build a community put whatever beefs you have aside with someone and build something to where one, it's lasting and two, you just don't come up, become a footnote in local, in local history. We've, we've had our share of, of uh, conflict among performers. Uh, you and I overlap a lot in the, the burlesque scene um, and that has gotten messy in the past. As far as I know, it's pretty calm right now um, but by the time this hits the air, who knows what will be going on? I, I don't know. I stepped away like about two years ago because it was just becoming overly, overly dramatic. And I love every, we have some insane performers in this state. And if oh, you yeah. haven't seen the burlesque show in Utah, um, there is the one at the UAA. That, I can't remember the name of it because my brain is fried. This one? Kiki Cabaret. There's Kiki Cabaret. Waikiki has performances of burlesque. Um, drag Kings, which they, my kings do not get enough attention. True. I love drag race, but there are phenomenal drag kings that deserve to be seen and respected at Waikiki. Um, there's Prohibition. There's random shows. Um, Madison is still producing, correct? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Madison Can Can, um, Ibiza has wonderful shows. So there's all of these talented people doing these and no two shows are alike. Right. No two shows and no two performers are alike. Um, and each one of these shows brings something different and a different style. And if you can get a chance to see all of them, you could probably hit a burlesque show once a, once a week here in Utah. There's that much talent here. Yeah, definitely. Um, and if, if you if you branch out into drag shows uh, and and other other kinds of um, what I would call variety performances, um, there's there's a lot going on. Um, Gonzo Rising is is kind of my baby, the the all weirdo review, um, and that's a few times a year. I, I haven't been able to make that a, a regular go yet. Um, and uh, Ms. has been in, been in at least one of my shows. I'm trying to remember. Yep. You were, you're in uh, Out of the Hat, I think, the, the improvised show. Yep, because that's where most of my skills lie, are, are improvised, either burlesque or um, now acting. I'm not really sure how I ended up there. But yeah. Well, I, I think a lot of weirdos have a certain amount of acting skill because in order to survive, we have to act normal. Exactly. Cool. Well, um, we've actually already uh, coming close to our end time. This has been great. I want to finish with, uh, with a question I like to ask. What advice do you have for uh, young up and coming weirdos? Or what advice do you wish you had when you were a uh, younger? Um, basically three things. No is a complete sentence when it leaves your mouth. Do not be afraid to be seen as difficult. Boundaries are a good thing for, they, they make you safe. And it's okay if people don't like you. 
you won't die. It hurts for a little bit. But as long as you try to treat everyone with respect, it works itself out in the end. Perfect. Uh, a younger me could have used all of that. All right. Well, that's it for Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. Come back at us next week when our guest will be a complete surprise, but a weirdo. And possibly from Utah, but I'm starting to get out of Utah. I've got someone from Hollywood coming up soon. Uh, and maybe someone you've heard of. Ooh. Um, thank you, Ms. We'll uh, talk to you again soon. And also to you folks. Bye, everyone. Bye. God bless you all. God save the king. It's, it's the work of the devil. You'll feel better after you drink this. Grog? 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 I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Can't help that. <laughs> yeah, all bad here. I'm bad. You're